Appreciate Brother Stevens. Did a tremendous job all day Sunday. And uh, it was just a great service. Good move of the spirit. And basking in the glow of that all week. And well, I need that on Sundays. That's that's church. That's what church is all about. That was wonderful. And uh, look forward to more services just like that. This church will will definitely grow. It can't, can't not can't not that spirit of God just keeps on going through these doors and down these streets and Amen. it comes out of you when you talk to people and you get excited they wonder why you're excited about living for God and you can't help but tell them so and I've tried to I purpose I've tried to purposely make an effort these last couple of weeks to not wear anybody out at all but if anybody shows any interest in, in uh, anything to do with God I know there's that eclipse so people had more of a more of a deal for that but it still it still made those conversations easier and then it made it to where now I can still kind of have that dialogue with people that I wasn't before so God is moving people are looking for something out there and I want to have an answer for them, which is how good God is and how he, how he wants to have a relationship with you and, he's, and he loves you and cares for you it's awesome looking for God it's such a great it's such a great life living for God brother Steve I wish I could convey that to people, how good this is. It's a wonderful life. If I could get a volunteer to take up an offering, you guys don't have to fight over who does it for you. We'll take turns. Praise the Lord. Appreciate these young men. They do a great job. Praise the Lord. We'll all stand. We're going to give God thanks one more time. And Give him some praise, exalt him, lift him up above all things. He's worthy. He's bigger than anything we have going on in our lives. He can take, handle anything. Nothing's not surprised by anything. Amen. We're going to lift him up in prayer. We're going to sing some good songs. And we're going to have church tonight. Praise the Lord.
testimony about the goodness of God. God been good to anybody tonight? He's been good to me. Anybody? Yes. Yes. That's right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Amen. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I don't. I don't remember the last time I made a mistake, Sister Diane. It's been a while. It's been a while. Yeah. 
Yes, that's how it works. That's how it works. The kingdom of God is like a mustard seed. It starts out little and just keeps on growing and growing and growing. Your own individual life, you just keep on, keep on expanding. Well, that's it for everybody. God's been good to most of us. No, he's been good to all of us. God is good. He's been good to all of us. He's good all the time. Time for Brother Erickson to give us a Bible study. Unless he's having Brother Stevens do it again. No, no. Praise You'll the Lord. Probably want Brother Stevens to do it. <laughs> I just put my crutch up here. What was that verse this morning in Psalms 119? Can you find that for me? I'm not seeing it right here in front of me. Well, praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Have you ever tried to figure out where you as a Christian fit in in the Old Testament. I mean, I'm not David. <laughs> uh, this thing isn't just talking about the king of the king that, that was faithful, a, a man after God's own heart, though certainly those are attributes we should aspire for. And um, I mean, really, when you look at the Bible, it, it really breaks down to some key people that, that gives you... A, explanation of their life it usually will show you their errors along with their obedience and their faith right and um, um, but have you ever tried to think of yourself as one of the masses of people that went through uh, the wall of wa water coming out of Egypt into into the wilderness and um, and try to think well where do I find my continuity to who I am today as a Christian, am I just some number, am I just, um, you know, just one of the sum of many that were there, we, we don't even know how many people were there at that time, you know, it's projected anywhere from one to four million people, um, it just kind of depends on who you're talking to, so I, I'm, and I'm saying that tonight to bring you around that that we're living in a society today where um, we have suppressed individualism. We are saying, just go with the flow. Shut up. And, and our rights as human beings in America, um, I mean, if the black people and the Asians and the uh, Spanish, if they get it, then... Well, so should I. And our, our, our thinking is so uh, far, I think, from what God wants us to think sometimes. Uh, if, you're, if you're leaning only on our government subsidy, you're, you're not living the life God wants you to live. Now, I, I want you to know, I'm on Social Security. <laughs> um, and some weeks from one to the other, I am relying on it. <laughs> But, but it's, at, yes, I mean, you know, we all know that when we get to a certain age, we, we can collect that, and that's part of our government program for, for all people. But I, I want to show you tonight that my topic is faith always reveals God in your life. Faith always reveals God in your life. Uh, we could sing a lot of songs, faith, 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 just a little bit of faith. Um, you don't need a whole lot, just use what you got, right? But it's, it's like we're living today in a no deposit, no return. That may be even too old for some of you. That's what they used to say on the bottles, that you would turn in and get your money back, get your five cents or whatever on it. <clears throat> no deposit, no return world. And we, and we know that... Uh, we know the price of everything because we have internet and we, you know, can look it up on our own, but we don't know the value of anything. 
we know the cost out of my wallet, but we don't know what it's going to do in my life. It's the, we don't know the, the changes it's going to do. Every decision we make, every step we make, uh, I'm telling you, we are making decisions each and every day that are going to change the direction of your life. I don't say that to threaten you. I'm just saying it's true. And so I want to read to you tonight. Uh, this is Second Chronicles chapter 7, verses 1 through 3. And this will be my opening verse. I think, we, I think we're going to have it here. Yeah. Now when Solomon had made an end of praying, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the burnt offering and the sacrifices, and the glory of the Lord filled the house. And the priest could not enter into the house of the Lord because the glory of the Lord had filled the Lord's house. And when all the people of Israel saw how that the fire came down and the glory of the Lord upon the house, they bowed themselves with their faces to the ground upon the pavement and worshiped and praised the Lord, saying, For he is good, for his mercy endureth forever. So my message tonight is built around us knowing God more, more completely, more often, with greater faith, amen. And God is interested in that. When we are... Uh, Let's pray. Lord Jesus, I pray that you bless your word. Thank you for this Bible study. I pray that it would be truly helpful to us, that we could grow in this. I pray that you bless the church in Chelsea. I pray, Lord, that you would use these who have come as seed that would reach into our world and be planted and sow. And, Lord, I pray that we'd see a harvest of people that are going to live for God in 2024. Lord, I ask this in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You can be seated. Now, when we talk about the Old Testament and the New Testament as two separate, distinct things, the New Covenant, the Old Covenant, we have to realize that some things truly moved from the Old Testament and were just as important, as just as important in God's point of view in the New Testament. And um, some things didn't change just because of uh, we went from Malachi to Matthew. <clears throat> the moral law didn't was not removed. Um, do we go around uh, with the Ten Commandments written on our walls? Mm, possibly some do, but most don't. But 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 we have an understanding tonight, and we realize that 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 law was never removed; it was only fulfilled in a new and living way in the New Testament. Romans 7 and 7 says this, What shall we say then? Is the law sin? God forbid. No, I had not known sin, but by the law. For I had not known lust, except the law said, Thou shalt not covet. So we understand tonight that the law is, has its complete power and and effectiveness in our world today that we're living in, but we understand today that the way that we respond and receive that word is different than what they did in the Old Testament. And that's the part I want to talk to you tonight about how that we receive God's principles and truths versus how they did. Amen? Romans 3, of course, 23, we all know this, for all have sinned. And come short of the glory of God. So one of the greatest truths in all of Scripture tonight is this simple understanding of what God requires of us to live for him. And we say, oh, come on, brother, I've, I've got that. We already know all that. Well, <clears throat> there again, I, wanna, I want to be able to parallel the Old and the New Old Testament people and the New Testament church today, and be able to look at the way we receive this word, the way that we initiate it in our lives. Um, in 1 John 3, 7, John wrote, Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. And then verse number 11 of that same chapter, In this the children of God are manifested. That's what I want to talk to you about, is about what is the manifestation of uh, believing truth tonight. 
In this, the children of God are manifest, and the children of the devil, whosoever doeth not righteousness, is not of God, neither he that loveth not his brother. So righteousness tonight is, is that idea of being right before God in every aspect of our life. It's not just what church I go to and who the pastor is and, and what I do for the church and how many hats I wear. It's more than that, isn't it? It's realizing tonight that, that we have this, uh, this beautiful walk with God and that we are learning how to manifest God's word through our lives. Now, the Lord didn't cease to be holy going from the Old Testament to the New Testament. Holiness is part of God's character. It's not a garment he's wearing. It's, it's not only his authority. It's not only his power. But it's what he stood for. It's what he believed, what, he's, what, what he demanded of his people. What he required to be God's people. Holiness tonight, that's why the Bible says, God is holy, therefore be ye holy. Why does it, how can I be holy? I'm just a human being. Well, it's a, it's a mindset. It's a character issue tonight. It's not necessarily uh, what we did. When, I, when I've gone overseas, my, my friend, there's a lot of differences of what holiness is in different parts of the world. I don't mean that bad or good. I'm just telling you it's the facts. I can't tell you the number of churches I went into in Eastern Europe where I came in and, and all uh, the women are on the right-hand side and all the men are on the left-hand side. And there are no children or teenagers there. I said, where are they? I said, do you have like Sunday school? No. And, and all the women had shawls over their, kerchiefs over their head. That was their standard of holiness that their churches required them. All the men, well, they were, they all sat together. <laughs> I went to the gypsies in Moldova, and uh, uh, they had some of those same traits, but not quite to the same extent. Uh, but there were things, uh, uh, believe me, I took communion there at least five times. And it's real wine. <laughs> and it's, it's a wafer or something, you know. And I'm, I'm getting ready to teach on a lesson, and they're saying, well, we're going to take communion first. And I'm thinking, okay. <laughs> so I didn't wear my proper tie. Holiness is not a mandate. Holiness is such a, a right attitude that we want to please God in my life. It's not my church's standard. It's got to become my standard. It's not just what the body is doing or else I can't sing in a choir. It's got to be an attitude that says, I want to be like the Lord. You see, here's, uh, I'll, I'll cut to the, to the point of showing you. In, in the Old Testament, all of those people that we don't know their names, we don't know anything about them other than that they were Jews. But we know this about them. Their concept of knowing God was to fear God, to quake and shake in their boots. They're the ones who said, Moses, you go up and talk to them. And whatever you say, he said, when you come down, we'll do it. Their whole idea of, of, of knowing God was making sure they did all the religious ceremonies. Well, sure, I'm an I'm a Old Testament Jew. I, I do this and I do that. What about the Pharisees in the New Testament who, who mocked Jesus? And, and what, was the, what was the proof that they were so holy? Well, they, they would go in their backyard and, and count the leaves of mint and anise and pluck a tenth off and bring it to the house of God. In other words, implying that they were so exacting about how obedient they were to the law. Jesus said, 
you bunch of snakes. The Old Testament, their, their, their mandate of knowing God was that they were willing to follow in a herd that would follow Moses or Joshua or whoever it was that was leading them. They were, they were willing to go through all the rituals, ceremonial laws that were required. And, and, and their separation of individualism was nigh into nothing. How, do we, how did Joshua ever get to be the great leader that he was? Well, he's one of the few people that the Bible distinguishes that did something above and beyond what everyone else did. He became Moses' uh, um, a servant. And he went with him when God took the tabernacle out of the mix of the people and put it without the camp. Where's Joshua? Oh, he's out in the tent. I want to show you tonight that your greatest life is ahead of you if you ever come to the realization how important it is for you to give your all in your walk with God. I'm not trying to get you to take up another position in the church tonight. I'm not asking you to take up an offering tonight. I don't want your money right now. <laughs> I, don't, I don't want to, to have... Uh, see who can wear the, the most hats tonight. That, that doesn't make us a better Christian. And yet, God honors faith. And faith says, if I believe in God, this, I've got to do something about it. If I believe that God's ways are right, then I need to renounce everything that isn't God's way in my life. And I need to separate myself unto God and give him my best. I need to be the best Old Testament Christian. God does work off in percentages. He doesn't, he doesn't judge us by he who had five and two and one talent. But he does care what we do with it. We're talking about a, a wonderful Savior tonight who wants to accelerate your life and bless you beyond measure. But it still happens when we commit ourselves to what we believe. Doesn't mean I'm better than Scott. Doesn't mean I'm not as good as Jacob. It just means that each of us have got to realize today, God wants to manifest something in your life. Israel wanted God to manifest himself among them. But the New Testament Christian has got to want to manifest God through their life. I appreciate our church, but there's a responsibility on my shoulder tonight to be what I should be. Wherefore, come out from amongst them and be severed, and touch not the unclean thing. I will be a father to you, you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord. And, and therefore, having these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves. God wants us to be a people that want to please God. Israel lived in fear in the Old Testament. What, what are we supposed to do? But the New Testament Christian is supposed to live in faith. That's the, that's the opposites of the old covenant to the new. That's why he came. That's why his plan was not to leave them uh, in a world of, of simply a promised land of milk and honey. That wasn't good enough. He needed to be in us. He needs to be able to show you that he can be the God of your wilderness so that one day he can bring you out to a promised land of blessing because you obeyed. Because you love him. Because you want to live for him. Oh, I'm giving you dynamite tonight. I'm giving you hope. Amen. That no matter what you're going through, you've got to change your thinking. Matthew 6 and 9. Talking about holiness. After this manner, therefore, pray ye, our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Our very prayer life. Can I tell you something? Remember what Ezekiel saw, the temple? And let's see, where was, the, where was the rivers of life of water flowing from? 
from out from under the altar. Right? God's riches flow out of your altar. We are measured tonight, not how long you pray or if you did it every day this week, but we're measuring on us wanting to know him while we're there. Wanting to hunger for him while we're in humbled position, either on our knees or in a chair or walking or whatever we're doing. We're humbling ourselves and we're saying, God, I've got to know you more. That's what our prayer life has got to be tonight. It's not just saying, I'll go. Pastor won't be there, but I'll go. God bless your pea-picking soul. <laughs> what I'd like you to do is I'd like you to pray when you get here. <laughs> I'm kidding, but, I'm, but, but you all understand I'm very serious about this. God is a God of measurement. God is a God tonight who takes, he took Joshua, who was willing to be to serve, and he said, I can deal with that. God took Moses, who finally had all uh, of Egypt and its bounty uh, at, his, at his feet, living in Pharaoh's house, but he came to the realization, I am not an Egyptian. I don't want to be a stepchild of Egypt. I want to be a child of God, of God's people. Every person you go in, in Hebrews 11, the heroes of faith we call them, oh, they went through living hell, didn't they? They went through some hard places, God, terrible times. Hebrews 11 goes on and talks about those who are, who are killed for their faith and their walk with God. But understand me tonight, God blesses faith tonight. That's where he reveals himself. He doesn't owe us because we came to church to this facility tonight. He owes us when we begin to lift up holy hands to him and praise him and, and begin to really mean that we're thankful. And to God, we really want to praise you. And, and God, we really want to receive the word of God tonight. First Peter 1 and 15, But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation. Conversation in the Greek, lifestyle. In all manner of your, of your lifestyle, be that dedicated. We're not saying, oh, I won't do that. I had people, when I was starting out, you know, some would go play putt-putt and others wouldn't. Well, I'm a 19-year-old stupid kid that's been playing it for years. Holiness never entered my mind. <laughs> but I, I had to learn. I've had to grow. But my, my point being that, that there will always be standards that some will do and others won't. That minister I, I had been going every Tuesday night to his, his house, and they would have oh, a kind of a praise uh, that was actually their church meeting there. And there's, oh, I'm, I'm going to say 13, 14 people that would come. And I mean, you could feel the Spirit of the Lord. They, they, there are people that had the Holy Ghost. And of course, they were wanting me to follow them with their, you know, Latvian songs and language. And of course, I'm bumbling along here. Because, you know, I'm, I don't know anything. And, uh, but once in a while they throw in an English song. And unfortunately, I didn't always know them either. <laughs> <clears throat> but I, but, but the, nearing the end of my stay there, I, um, I said, hey, let's get together. And we, we went out and, and went to a restaurant and had lunch together. And he ordered beer. I'm thinking, <clears throat> taboo. Well, you're not going to see me drink beer. In the culture I was raised in, that's not something we church folks do. But for him, that wasn't an issue. In, the, in Europe, a lot of beer, a lot of wine goes down. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just telling you it was different to me. And I realized if I was going to have a meaningful conversation with him and encourage them and be all I could be to be a help to them, 
This was not the time for me to cut him under and tell him he was going to split hell wide open. Because obviously, from his perspective, that was not an issue. He said, are you offended? I said, no, sir. <laughs> I said, I, I'll be honest with you, I would not do it. I said, but I'm not saying it's wrong. I understand I'm in a new world here. And I, you know, best I could answer. Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. <laughs> the Old Testament fear has got to be changed into a New Testament experience. That's how we're known of God. By the works. And I'm not talking about, I have five more works than you do. Ha, ha, ha. We don't measure ourselves among ourselves. This is not how to find the pecking order in a church. This is all about how to know God, to realize tonight that he's interested in where I'm drawing the line to live for him. He's interested how much dedication I have in my life to seek him. He's interested in what my prayer life is uh, and that I'm looking for spiritual answers uh, uh, before I ever see them come to pass in a world, a physical world around me. God is looking for a church tonight that wants to know him. When I'm saying these things, I'm excited because I believe it. But I'm not saying it because you're doing wrong. Don't misread me here. I'm saying it's got to be at the forefront of our, of our focus. God, I want, to, I want to do better. I want to find ways to, to incorporate in my life my love and my faith and my walk with God more and more and more. Solomon had to dedicate the temple in this scripture text we read tonight. The glory was a light that was bursting forth in the man's world, and they could see and perceive God's radiance, his glory. The Bible said they saw it. They saw it. His presence, his, his, his shining of the light was so dense in that room, in that temple, that the priest could not minister. Can you imagine Old Testament priests not being able to minister and do their duties? For they measured their walk with God by their duties. God wanted to measure their walk with God by his presence. There's a difference. Well, Brother Erickson, I have done this X, Y, Z, and X, Y, and, and, you know, all these things for the church. And, and my answer will be, thank God that you were kind and to do that and help us because it may possibly have never been done if you didn't do it. But that, doesn't, that is not God's measuring stick to say that you're right or wrong. But everything that we do tonight, the manifestation of God in our life, must be our seeking him. They perceived those disciples in early Acts that they had been with Jesus. There was, a, there was a mannerism. There was an attitude. There was a seeking the same similar desire, outcome. Their goals and their purposes followed what Jesus had taught. And they knew that these were the real people that believed the message. Second Chronicles 7, 4, and 5 says, Then the king and all the people offered sacrifices before the Lord. And King Solomon offered a sacrifice of 22,000 oxen and 120,000 sheep. So the king and all the people dedicated the house of God. You see, faith today is not measured by our actions alone, but they're measured by our motive by our desire. We pursue him. We try to please him. We know how important it is to obey him. And we have a desire to be with him. And that will fulfill all the law. 
that will fulfill everything that Old Testament Israel did in their actions. But by my desire to know him and seek him and grow in him, study his word, hunger for his presence, make my petitions known unto him. These things are the things that really truly measure. And God is waiting to be able to say, I have not seen this much faith in all of Israel. To simply say, I know, Lord, that you will heal my son. Praise God. This was the Old Testament's dilemma. Is that God was so holy and they were so sinful. They saw no mediator that would allow them to ever come before him except that they quaked and shaked and feared for their very lives. And God said, I don't want that. That's not what my church is for. And so I'm going to bring and offer up mercy immediately, and my grace will be sufficient for you. And I'm going to invest and give you the tools that you need in order that you don't have to fear retribution. You don't have to fear the judgment of God crushing you because of what you've done in the past. But as soon as you say, forgive me, he has already forgiven you. Why? You must not stop there and say, I believe God forgave me. But you must see what I'm trying to eke out here tonight if I could be better, better at this. And Brother Stevens up here tonight, I think. You've got to want to go beyond the cross. You've got to want newness of life. You've got to want to live for God with all of your heart, to love him. You have to realize tonight that they could not love God with all their heart, soul, mind, and strength in the Old Testament. For they were fearful of God's judgment and his holiness. But in the New Testament tonight, we incorporate those things because he dwells in us. And tonight we don't have to fear God's harsh judgments. But tonight we can rejoice in his mercy. And we can commit ourselves to know him more and more and more. Hebrews 2, 1 and 2 says, Therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things which we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. For if the word spoken by angels was steadfast, and every transgression and disobedience received a just recompense of reward. That's how it was in the Old Testament. But in the New Testament, we have this new view. My brother Chris Erickson, which you all know, has such a different perception of my father than I do. I want you to know my dad was far from perfect and he, you know. But, but I commend him for raising eight children. And I, of course, was the best because I was last. <laughs> That's a side note, sorry. <laughs> I said that in case my sister Lori is watching. <laughs> Such a different perception. You see, my dad would never go to Chris's basketball games or his, or his, he, he, was, he had one of the state records for high jumping in New York State. And very athletic. Chris, Chris played basketball on the high school varsity team. And, uh, <clears throat> and what Chris you know, would tell you today uh, that I think those things really hurt him that his dad didn't come and participate in those things. But me, the baby, who was there when daddy had his boat and my family had already gone through a perilous time on, on uh, Ontario Lake where, they, where my mom and dad and my older brother and sister nearly lost their lives 
the boat was nearly turned over upside down. They lost everything in the boat, went to sea. And uh, they limped home, and my mom would never get on a boat again. And my brother didn't have a lot of enthusiasm about it either. But me, I'd never gone through that. I couldn't wait to go out with Daddy on Friday nights. We go down to the slip and get that old 30-foot wooden boat and a 90-horse motor in it that couldn't keep it going into the wind. <laughs> and we would take that thing out, and we'd hang the lanterns over the side, and we'd drop our anchors, our, our, our fish uh, uh, weights down with those big hooks and uh, with a light over the side and the, all the bugs. Bugs and coffee, that's what I remember. <clears throat> We, we would fish, and I would fall asleep with a blanket over me, and I would come home, I'd wake up in the morning, and I'd run down to see how many fish we caught that were in the sink. Yeah, that's my dad. We'd go out on some Sundays after church, and we would go up the barge canal, and we'd pull off just to the side and tie off to a branch, and, and there we'd get out our little gas grill and get out the hot dogs and the hot dog buns and chips. And we would just have a wonderful time. But that's not Chris's view. Israel had a different view of God. Because they didn't know. They never broke the shell and saw his love for them. They never perceived that he cared for them. That what he did for them was for their good. Because he loved them. That's what the Bible says in Hebrews the 12th chapter that we were punished by God, the chastening of the Lord, is because he loves us, does it not? They never saw that. They, they, they just were going through the, the, through the steps, just going through the ritual, just going through the day in and out rules. And they never, they never knew him. And tonight I want to speak to a church that I love and appreciate. And I believe me, I believe that you all have a walk with God. I'm not, I'm not here trying to tell you that you did it wrong and you need to repent. I'm here to tell you tonight that we've got to pursue. We've got to get after it. Now that we understand how important this is to God, I'm, I'm offering you tonight that the sky is the limit, what God can do in your life, in your marriage, in your home, with your kids, with your future. There's no telling what God can do. He just wants us to know him. Would you stand with me? We're fearful whenever all we see is judgment or the fear of judgment. That day that Aaron stood there as the two boys were killed, because of their disobedience and the Lord brought fire upon them. Aaron thought that the holiness of God justified the death of the two boys. Well, God wanted Aaron to realize that if they would just seek him, God's redemption is there and available for any one of us. Tonight, this really isn't a message about what you're going through right now. Because whether you're going through your worst lows or your greatest highs, this message is for you. It simply says, God wanted me to share this with you to tell you how much he loves you. That he gave you everything in place so that you could stand on solid ground and know, I know my daddy. I know he loves me. I know he forgave me. I know that he's going to help me. Amen. Tonight, the fear of the old must become the experience of the new. You need to experience God in your life. Take a chance. Do a little more today than you did yesterday. Give God two extra minutes tomorrow morning in prayer. Take part of your prayer and specifically talk to him about you growing, you developing, you being what he wants you to be. 
I promise you every step you make, he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Amen. It's almost like we have given that scripture only to those who are don't know God and if they would just come and get their all, God would fill them with the Holy Ghost. And I believe that's true. But he's also talking to the church tonight that we can go farther if we choose to. Don't be satisfied with all the good things you've done thus far. I'm not, I'm not belittling it. I'm not saying it was insignificant. I'm just saying God, I think, wants to tell us tonight that there's more. Exercise your faith. Seek him. David saw it on morning, noon, and night. Daniel sought the Lord thrice every day. I'm not sure I do that right now. Maybe that's a new challenge. Somehow God will talk to every one of us tonight because there's room for us to grow in him. Amen. Why don't we sing this song? I want to be holy, holy like you. I want to be holy, holy like you. Holy Spirit, purify me, cleanse and make me new. I want to be holy, holy like you. I want to be holy, holy like you. I want to be holy, holy like you. Holy Spirit, purify me, cleanse and make me new. I want to be holy, holy like you. Lord, I pray that tonight you would touch those who have come tonight to Allow the Spirit of the Lord and the Word of God to speak. I pray that all our hands and our feet and our necks would be unfettered. That there would be, Lord, tonight opportunity in every one of our life to make a step in you. To grow in the grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. I pray, Lord, that you would bless this church. That this would be the example. This would be the manifestation of God in Chelsea, Oklahoma that they would see through the lives of we who believe and those who could not be here tonight. I pray, Lord, that you would reveal your mastery through the lives of the people, not because we're good, not because we're better than someone else, but because, Lord, we've learned the lesson to exercise thy faith by seeking you and your pleasure. Bless tonight, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, God bless you. Appreciate you, church. I, I hope that I hope I wasn't too hard on you. I didn't mean to be. But we need, we've got to go further. We've got to go further. Amen. God bless you.